What's up, smarty people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live in a living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Smarter? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you could have me at your next event. You know, I like to party with the people. Also, if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to check out my other podcast. It's called What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Now, on with the show. Today on the program, historical facts. You know, I like historical facts, learning from history. I read one single article and become an expert on the subject. That's how the internet works, right? Today's historical facts, well, six amazing breakthroughs made by the ancient Greeks. You ever watch the, my big fat Greek wedding? The dad on that movie claims that everything came from the Greeks. And there's arguments to be made. It's not just har- hyperbole. It's, uh, uh, yeah, ancient Greeks. We owe a lot to them. Six amazing breakthroughs. For, two, for more than two millennia, the ideas of ancient Greeks have spurred some of humanity's greatest achievements. Philosophy, drama, science, and mathematics. <laughs> mathematics. <laughs> mathematics sprung from that particular peninsula on the Mediterranean. The work of the Greek scholars propelled Muslim thinkers during the Islamic Golden Age and the European rediscovery of their ancient texts ignited the Renaissance and sustained the Enlightenment, giving way to new scientific advancements and even new ways of living and governing. These are six amazing breakthroughs from ancient Greece, born from some of history's greatest minds. Number one. Pythagoras' theorem formed the foundation of geometry. Pythagoras of Samos is arguably the most famous mathematician from ancient, ancient Greece, and there were a lot of them. And that's because nearly every person at some point in their educational journey is taught the, his eponymous theorem, expressed as A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Oh, I should have had you say it along with me. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The Pythagorean theorem states that the square of two sides of a right triangle is equal to the hypotenuse. In ancient times, it's proved the existence of irrational numbers. Oh, oh. (laughs) And formed the cornerstone of what became Euclidean geometry. More on Euclid later which plays a very real role in construction and navigation today. Some of the world's smartest minds have set out to provide proofs of the Pythagorean theorem, including Albert Einstein. He was 12 at the time. What were you doing when you were 12? And new proofs are still being discovered to this day. Simply put, the world would be a very different place without Pythagoras' triangular insight. Number two. Hippocrates looked for a scientific cause of illness. Watch any kind of medical drama, and it won't be long before you hear the phrase Hippocratic Oath, meaning a doctor's sacred duty to do no harm. Although a bit of myth is in today's hospitals, the oath is a lasting testament to the life and work of Hippocrates of Kaos, C-O-S, living in the 5th century BCE. Hippocrates was one of the world's first physicians to explore the cause of illness beyond the usual divine explanations at the time. Zeus's displeasure, for instance. He's known as the father of medicine because he took a scientific approach to studying illness and tried devising treatments as described in the 60 or so of his writings that survive to this day. Hippocrates influenced many future generations but his most important student was arguably Galen of Pergamum the, in the 2nd century CE, a Roman physician whose work became 
bedrock of European and Arabic medicine for more than a millennium, and who once claimed that all his knowledge originated with Hippocrates. Number three. Aristotle devised a system for classifying animals. During Aristotle's astounding life in the 4th century BCE, he wrote about a cornucopia of scientific subjects, including physics, physiology, economics, ethics, government, and poetry. But what is often lost in the academic deluge is the fact that Aristotle was 2,200 years ahead of his time in the field of biology. Today, we classify animals using Latin names in a system devised by Swedish botanist Carl Linnaeus in the 18th century. But Aristotle created a classification system back in ancient Greece that was remarkably similar to our modern one. Aristotle separated animals into two groups, those with blood and those without blood, or at least red blood. And while Linnaeus didn't use this particular distinction, it's similar to how the animal kingdom is separated into vertebrates, those with spines, and invertebrates. From there, the Greek thinker divided animals into genera, which were broader categories than the genus distinction that we use today, and then by species. The groundbreaking foresight into ordering the natural world is why Aristotle is remembered today as the father of zoology. Pretty cool. Moving on. Euclid knew. Hey, remember Euclid? Euclid knew that light traveled in a straight line. Euclid, considered the father of geometry, was no slouch when it came to studying the nature of light and vision. Published in 300 BCE, his work, Optics, is considered the first time a scholar gave serious scientific thought to the nature of light. Euclid theorized that light propagated in rays and traveled in a straight line, a big departure from the platonic idea of light as an ethereal emanation. The nature of light and human vision became a vast field of study. Interesting Romans, Muslim astronomers, and Renaissance thinkers, Enlightenment scientists, and even 20th, 20th century minds. Albert Einstein, for example, remember him? Won the 1921 Nobel Prize in Physics for his general theory of relativity, as often presumed, but for a discovery. No, wait. He won the Nobel Prize in Physics not for his general theory of re relativity, as often presumed, but for a discovery in the field of optics known as the photoelectric effect. I didn't know that. Continuing. Aristarchus knew the planets orbited the sun. The publication of Nicholas Copernicus, six books concerning the revolutions of the heavenly orbs in 1543 is a major moment in history as the Polish scientist heliocentric theory directly challenged Catholic dogma, proclaiming that the Earth was at the center of the solar system. In reality, Copernicus was mostly reiterating what some ancient Greeks knew nearly 2,000 years before. In the 3rd century BCE, Aristarchus of Samos, likely drawing from the work of another Greek astronomer, astronomer Philoas of Croton, theorized that the sun was a much more massive was much more massive than the earth and he placed the planet in its rightful orbit around the star the first heliocentric model of the solar system much like copernicus's work aristarchus theory was met with pushback when, with one stoic saying he should be indicted for putting into motion the hearth of the universe and his ideas were ultimately rejected. This allowed geocentrism to flourish for far too long until Copernicus, citing both Philo Philolaus and Aristarchus, eventually set the record straight. Pretty cool. Ah, science. Keep going. Aristosten <laughs> Aristosthenes accurately measured the globe around the same time as Aristarchus 
was configuring the solar system into its rightful arrangement, the Greek mathematician Aristarthenes of Cyrene pulled off one of the greatest calculations in world history. For nearly 300 years, the ancient Greeks had known the earth was round. Pythagoras established as much back around 500 BCE. But understanding that the earth was a globe and comprehending its precise proportions were two different things entirely. And Aristosthenes set out to solve the latter. On the summer equinox in 240 BCE, Aristosthenes measured a shadow cast by a stick in Alexandria, Egypt, that measured 7.12 degrees, roughly one-fiftieth of a circle. Meanwhile, in Cyrene, modern-day Aswan, Egypt, a particular well cast no shadow, meaning the sun was directly overhead. The mathematician then hired surveyors to measure the distance from Alexandria to Cyrene and came up with 5,000 stadia. This measurement enabled him to calculate the Earth's circumference at 250,000 stadia, or somewhere between 24,000 and 29,000 miles. The exact length of a stadium is debated. Today, we know the Earth measures about 24,900 miles around the equator. In other words, even over 2,200 years ago, Aristosthenes got it just about right pretty cool math is cool how do you like math drop me some comments let me know what you think six amazing breakthroughs made by the ancient greeks i still think of the father in big fat greek wedding everything came from the greek and yes windex cures everything according to him according to him don't use windex for a cure-all don't do it that's it for this edition of what makes you smarter i like learning some things also if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others i encourage you to check out my other podcast it's called what makes you famous find it everywhere using the hashtag what makes you famous that's it for me it's keys dan radio what.com dj little peace <laughs>